This is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News. Today I'm showing you the MRI of a very interesting patient who had what in, uh, appeared to be a prolactinoma and an elevated prolactin level. MRI was performed showing a lesion. And I'll show you that MRI now. Let's go back and find the cella tersica. You see the carotid arteries coming up here. This is the cella optic chiasm. And you can see this pituitary is clearly abnormal. There's this ovoid lesion here. This is normal, a very thin rim of normal pituitary gland on top of this tumor. This patient's prolactin level had actually fallen somewhat. And the reason being is that this is an example of a, of a pituitary tumor that underwent uh, hemorrhage. I don't call it apoplexy because apoplexy is a classic syndrome of pituitary hemorrhage with blood leaking into the subarachnoid space and uh, causing particular headaches and all sorts of other associated symptoms. But uh, I mean, it, it really is pituitary apoplexy, but we call it pituitary hemorrhage if it's contained and doesn't cause any third nerve palsies or visual pathway problems, etc. So it's a tumor that uh, probably outgrew its blood supply or something happened to the blood vessels and they were fragile. Or maybe she was on a blood thinner, who knows? And then the tumor basically hemorrhaged within itself. Now the usual outcome is that these patients require surgery. And that's because often, and probably more often than not, these lesions will develop cystic degeneration and those blood products don't get resorbed and they stay there and every time the, the different red cells and other things in the blood break down, every time an osmotic particle is created, they draw water in and then they can enlarge over time. So we most of the time recommend surgery for this type of a situation. The patient's prolactin was only about 33, which told us that there really weren't a lot of viable tumor cells here because most tumors this large, if they're viable, are going to have uh, or be associated with higher elevations in prolactin. So that was a bit curious. The other thing that was curious is this MRI was about nine months prior to us seeing her. So um, she was scheduled for surgery, uh, wanted to see an ophthalmologist who repeated her MRI, which was a good thing to do, as you'll see in a moment. Um, the, Interesting thing is, is most of the time we have patients who've not had an MRI within six months or so, or maybe a year, and we indicate that we'd like to repeat it. And I've heard so many times, well, I just had one, why do we have to do another one? And this is a good case example of that because sometimes that MRI provides additional useful information that changes the management plan. So we have another MRI. And you can see here, the lesion has completely or almost completely resolved. So the hemorrhage has gone away. There's a little cleft here and it remains to be determined whether that's going to be a problem in the future or not, but I doubt that it will. The other really beautiful thing is that we repeated her prolactin level, uh, not simply just relying on the one that was referred uh, when her primary physician checked it. Uh, and the prolactin level is now entirely normal. So her tumor, which probably had some viable cells um, a couple months ago uh, when the prolactin was elevated, uh, has since uh, finished its death, if you will. It's expired, it's gone. Uh, so this is a, a classic example of resolution of a prolactinoma uh, in the setting of hemorrhage with the hemorrhagic outcome being a good one with complete resorption of all the blood and dead tumor tissue by the immune system, which we don't always see, but obviously we can see it. This is really great to see this. And it makes sense if you have a bruise on your arm or your leg, it, you know, it resorbs after a while. Uh, I think they resorb in soft tissues more quickly than they do in the pituitary. But uh, I'm, I'm sure glad that the uh, ophthalmologist obtained another MRI just to take a look and see what, what was going on before the patient went to surgery.
the surgeon would have gotten there and noticed the same thing, but uh, this is the beauty of an MRI, and it's the beauty of a repeat MRI, especially in the setting of pituitary hemorrhage, where there um, has been a significant decline in prolactin, yet it's still elevated. Perhaps the better course of action is to wait another three to six months before intervening. All right, Dr. Lewis Blevins with a case here of a prolactinoma uh, that hemorrhaged and uh, basically resolved on its own, obviating the need for surgical intervention.